Hi. Have you ever wondered how much it might cost you and your friends to rent out the pool for an entire afternoon? For example, how much would you each pay if it cost $150 to rent the pool? In today's lesson, you will learn how to create and graph relationships by using rational functions. Before we get into that, let's go ahead and review. What is a rational function? Here are some examples of rational functions. And what you'll notice about a rational function is that a rational function is simply two polynomials divided by one another. What does a rational function look like on a graph? Well, if we were to take one of these rational functions and graph it, we might see a graph that looks like this. It actually has two distinct parts of the graph. The function has two distinct parts. And you'll also notice that there is some space in between. There's actually, in the range and domain, limits. We call these asymptotes. What common mistakes should you be looking out for? One thing that you may forget is that there are going to be input restrictions. Like we saw on that graph, these functions have limits in their domain. For instance, with the function y equals 2 over 7x, x cannot equal 0, because then the fraction would be 2 over 0, which is not within a range that we can graph. Let's go ahead and investigate the following. The local swimming pool charges $150 to rent the pool for the day. Create and graph the relationship between the number of people renting the pool and the price per person. Let's go ahead and highlight what are the important pieces of information in this problem. Well, we know that the pool costs $150 no matter how many people are renting it. What is this question asking us to find? It's asking us to do two things, to create and graph the function between the number of people renting and the price per person. So using that information, we should be able to kind of translate now into our function. So we know that the pool costs $150. We also know that the cost of something, if you're splitting it amongst people, is equal to the price per person times the number of people. So I'm going to go ahead and look at that function here, that 150 equals the price times the people. Let's go ahead and put this into a graph. You'll notice I've scaled my axes. I've also labeled them. My input is the number of people because changing the number of people is going to change the price per person. You'll notice that my output then is price per person. Each of those also has a label. In this case, the people is a number and price per person is a dollar amount. Remember our function here, $150 equals price times people. Let's go ahead and make an input output table and I've done that for you. I've found how much it would cost for each one of these inputs, number of people. And I'm going to go ahead and plot each one of these on our graph. Now as we're doing this, you'll notice that it starts out very expensive for just one person to be renting out the pool. But as we add more and more and more people, the cost per person goes down significantly. And as we connect these points to make our rational function, you'll notice that it looks like it's heading downwards. It will never ever reach zero though, because at some point every person has to pay. Even if we had a million people, we'd all be paying a very, very small amount. And so that would be what we call our horizontal asymptote. It will never be able to reach all the way down to zero cost per person. In the vertical, you can see that there is a limit because we can't have an input of zero people because if we were to have zero people then there'd be no way we could 
pay for that $150. In today's lesson, you have learned how to create and graph relationships by using rational functions.